we're going to talk about the Linux file system. One of the things that people find intimidating about the command line is just getting around. How do you know where you are and where to find things? There are a few tools we'll use that can help. One is the file system hierarchy standard. So if you go to pathname.com, you'll see FHS 2.3. You could look at that in HTML or PDF. We'll go ahead and look at the HTML version. So it tells us at a high level what the directory structure is and what should be in each directory. This is a directory structure that should be fairly common across Linux distributions. Another nice option that's built right into Ubuntu, meaning you don't have to go anywhere to look for it, is the Hire Man page. You type Man Hire, and you get a man page telling you what the hierarchy should be. So the first forward slash is the root directory. Next is the bin directory. This is for binaries or executable programs. These are programs that are needed in single user mode. And we'll talk more about single user mode in a later lesson. There's the boot directory that has static files that are needed for your bootloader, which is grub in this case. Grub looks in this directory for the boot files it needs to boot up your system. The dev directory has special or device files that refer to physical files. The Etsy directory has configuration files. We'll take a look at the Etsy directory in this lesson. The home directory is usually where users' home directories live. Lib is a directory that should hold shared libraries that you need to boot your system and to run the commands in the root file system. Media is a directory that contains mount points for removable media such as CDs and DVDs or USB drives. MNT is a directory for temporarily mounted file systems. OPT should have add-on packages that contain static files. If you install something yourself and it's not in your package manager, this is the place to put it. PROC is where your PROC file system is mounted. It provides information about running processes and the kernel. Root is usually the home directory for the root user. The home directory for root is usually not in the home directory where other users' directories are stored. It's in slash root, right off the root of the file system. SBIN holds binaries too, but these binaries are usually not executed by normal users. SRV contains site-specific data that is served by the system this is the mount point for the sysfs file, sy file system, which provides information about the kernel, similar to proc. Slash temp is the directory that contains temporary files, which may be deleted with no notice. Don't store anything you need in the temp directory. Slash user holds shareable read-only data. User bin is a primary directory for executable programs. Most programs ex executed by normal users, which are not needed for booting, are stored here. And we'll have a look at that directory in this lesson. Var is an important directory for administering your system. Contains files which may change in size, such as spool and log files. So you remember in several lessons we reference var log. Var log has a lot of things that help you troubleshoot issues on your system. Var www is where you'll have web web related things if this is a web server. 
So that's it for just scrolling quickly through the Hire Man page. Let's have a look at the actual file system. You can visualize the directory structure as a kind of a tree with root at the top. So if we cd to root, we can see the directories here. But there's a free tool that will help us actually visualize this as a tree. And you'll never guess the name. It's called Tree. So to install Tree, you go sudo apt install tree. And to put in your password. Now I've already installed it, so it didn't install it for me. But when, when you go to install it, it'll ask you if you want to install. It's a pretty small program, and it's great for following along in the lesson if you want to download it. The command we'll use here is tree minus D to only show directories and minus capital L two. So it'll only go two layers deep. If we go more than that, we just get a huge amount of output, which isn't helpful to us right now. So let's try this and you can see the directory structure. We're only going two levels deep. So the root is at the very top. There's bin, boot, grub, dev, and all its subdirectories, Etsy with all its subdirectories, home with the user directories, lib, lib64, media with a CD-ROM directory, mount, opt, proc, Many of these subdirectories are directories for processes that are running on the system. We can't read that because we didn't run as sudo. Only a root user could read the root directory. Run, sbin, snap, service, sys, user backup, user, and var. So 333 directories. If we go a level deeper, we'll see that'll get really huge. 1800 directories. And again, it, it just gets more cumbersome to look through. But you get the idea. There are directories starting from root and subdirectories and subdirectories as deep as you want to go. Now we'll look at a few of the directories you're likely to use most often. We'll start with Etsy. So we can see there's a lot of stuff in here. Apt is in here. Cron for running scheduled tasks is in here. LVM for Logical Volume Manager. Kernel. Network. System Control. Sudoers. SSH, SSL. Security and SE Linux. Many programs critical to your system are in the Etsy directory. If you install packages, there's a very good chance that some of that package will live in the Etsy directory. Let's look at the home directory. So again, this is where users home directories usually reside. Remember the root home directory is different. That's right in the root of the file system and it's just called root. We'll take a look at the opt directory. There's nothing in there usually by default, but if we install a program like Linus for evaluating the security of our system, this is the place we would put it. And the last directory we'll look at is var. The place you're likely to spend the most time is var log.
Some of the logs you look at the most are the auth log, It tells you status of sessions for logging in, logging out. If you're trying to work with someone and you configured SSH for them and it's not working quite right, this is where you go to look for what's going on. And syslog is another one that you'll probably use. Many system events go into syslog. If you install a piece of software like a web server or a database server, it will likely put some log files in here for you too. So that's where you would troubleshoot those. So that's it for our high level tour of the operating system. Please browse around and get your own feel for it as well.